Hey, hey, hey. Untamed. Untied. Unleash yourself. Let's unleash ourselves. Before we do, I just want to have at least a six-minute conversation about what has been happening in Untamed. Oh, me, oh, my. I mean, from the beginning with the cheetah and the golden retriever, how we're taught to be like each other, which teach uh, another teaching of us to lose ourselves and be like somebody else to follow in the path of another when we have our own path to be in, which teaches us to forget ourselves, literally, you know, to be caged and then long to be free and remember freedom, but remain caged. That's what the cheetah chapter was speaking to me on. And... Another chapter that spoke out to me was her asking about Adam and Eve, Glenelyn, and the way that the Sunday school teacher treated her like, put your hand down because you are speaking against what the Bible says. And I feel like little people are some of the most purest teachers because they are here to teach us. And we so much feel like that we are here to teach them because we are teachers, maybe. But we all are teachers on this journey. And her not being heard and I totally agree with Gwendolyn that it should be woman kind and men should be woe men and women should be womb men because we have wombs whether we have them or not you know we typically do and For it to be mankind, like who, what? <sighs> the things that we have been taught. But anyhow, because I don't want to get stuck right there because that's just a whole nother thing. And I feel like that it should be whoa, man, because they usually are slowing us down and helping us be balanced out. That's what sun energy does. Like, whoa, hold up. Wait, let's talk about it. Let's see what happened. Let's bring some resolve let's see the bigger picture that's what sun energy does for us and moon energy you know we grow souls in our womb we are womb healers because we grew in a womb to bring healing and then we grow souls in a womb to heal that soul as well to bring healing so it's just an exchange of healing so that stuck out to me the mankind when it definitely should be a womb in kind and we I call us woman and woman when I'm feeling like it. But most often I call us sun and moon energy because that's who we are to get us away from the genders and just really get us into the energy that we travel with because that's what we are here for. To not pay attention to the vessel that the energy is in, but to really pay attention to the energy because that's what we all are and we put pull these energies together to move forth in the peace on our journey the blowjob with the therapist i, I just you listen i we paid some people money to help us to be better and i feel like that was the absolute worst advice that anyone could give which is why i am not a giver of it people ask me all the time ebony what do you advise i advise you to listen to you that would be advice if i give it i would advise you to listen to you because getting my opinion on it now you got my thought you got your mama's thought you got your cousin's thought you have your spouse's thought you got your friend's thought your children's thought listen if if you coexist with animals you know you talk to your pet so now you have you know what you think if you think i'm crazy on it you know all of those different thoughts about what i am feeling i feel is unnecessary all those different thoughts about what you're feeling is unnecessary so I do not give advice, okay? I will share my experiences with you. If it's something that could be similar to what you're speaking to me about, I will share my experiences, but I will never tell you what I think you should do because I have no thought for what you should do because I'm busy reminding myself of what I need to do. And I am an excellent listener and I have no advice to give. And I feel the advice that this therapist gave her to go home and give him blowjobs because many women find blowjobs 
less intimate. She wanted her to stick the penis of the person who had been sleeping with other women, which is why they were there, because she was having a problem with a sex life with him because she was lying to herself, we know, and other different things. But instead of allow him to penetrate your pussy, allow him to penetrate your face. When, of course, you got to be thinking about these other women that he has penetrated. And now you want me to put all them in my mouth? Lady, miss, ma'am. Listen to yourself, okay? And I'm not saying do not go to therapists. Therapists are purposeful, okay? They are purposeful. Listen to you even on the therapist. That's all I'm saying. Listen to yourself. So, directions. Look, we already six minutes in. The images that we get from the soap, three times bigger, won't rob you of your dignity, slam door with a fold and share dirt. I mean, What? And then the enticing, touching, like the, the we got to pay attention to what we are teaching ourselves, teaching our moons and our sons. We really, really, really have to pay attention. Uh, another part that stuck out to me, especially, uh, was about the sensitivity of her moon that she was trying to ignore and even remove at some point because she wanted her to move on instead of being in tune with her feelings. This baby did not go outside of recess because she was concerned about these darn polar bears. I am a sensitive being. And when I was growing up, people said to me a lot, you're so sensitive. And my mother even said to me, and my dad said to me, I think it's been about a month, maybe two months now. Maybe not even to just this year, maybe a month or so ago, uh, that I was too sensitive. Uh, I'm just too sensitive on stuff. And I laughed and said, thank you, because it's a compliment to me now. Growing up, I thought it was a bad thing to be sensitive. I need to be tougher. You need to have thicker skin. Like, what? But I realized being sensitive means I'm in tune with my feelings and the feelings of others. So I'm less likely to cause pain because I'm more easy to bring love, peace, healing. Being sensitive is a great thing. So if any sensitive people, goddesses out there, any sensitive goddesses, listen. Remain sensitive. Do not become harsh and cruel because these people do not respect sensitivity. You do not need thicker skin. You need different friends. You need friends who honor your sensitivity. So yes, you're going to have to get with your best because you are not with your best people in place. And I don't care if it's friends and family. I don't care if it's your mama. I don't care. Listen, if you love your mama more than you, then that's your business and you go ahead on that journey. I don't love my mama more than me. And I'm no longer allowing her to use words such as sensitive against me. I'm speaking to me and for me and I am sensitive and I am so glad to be. So that was another part that of the untamed that stuck out to me. And look, eight minutes in the next book club. I said six, so maybe I, you know, it's my eighth year. It's that infinite abundance time. So eight. All right. Our next chapter that we're going into is arms. Okay. I sit in a cold plastic seat near the airport gate stare at my suitcase sip airport coffee it's bitter and weak i look at the plane through the gate window how many of those will i board in the coming year a hundred i'm bitter and weak too if i board this plane will it take me to chicago or here will i search for a driver holding a sign with my husband's last name on it I raise my hand, watch the driver's face register, surprised that I am a small woman in sweatpants instead of a large man in a suit. The driver would deliver me to the Palmer Hotel where a national book conference is being held. There, I'll stand on a stage in a grand ballroom and speak to a few hundred li librarians about my soon to be released memoir, Love Warrior. Love Warrior, the story of the dramatic destruction and painstaking reconstruction of my family is expected to be one of the biggest books of the year. I will be promoted and on the stage on stages and in the media for well forever. 
I'm trying to find my feelings about this. Fear, excitement, shame. I can't isolate anything specific. I stare at the plane wondering how to explain my life's most intimate, complicated experience to a sea of strangers within my seven allotted minutes. I have written a book and now I must become a commercial for the book I've written. What is the point of being a writer if I have to say words about the words I've already written? <laughs> Do painters have to draw about their paintings? I'd been at the air at this airport gate starting line before. Three years before, I released my first book and traveled the country telling the story of how I finally found happily ever after by trading my lifelong food and booze and addictions for a son, a husband, and writing. I stood on stage all over the country and repeated the book's message to hopeful women. Carry on. Life is hard, but you are a warrior. One day, it will all come together for you too. Right after the first book's ink dried, I sat in a therapist's office and listened to my husband say that he'd been sleeping around since our wedding. I held my breath as he said, there have been other women. And when I inhaled again, the air was made of smelling salts. He kept apologizing while looking down at his hands and the impotent star stammering made me laugh out loud. My laughter made both men, my husband, and his therapist visibly uncomfortable. Their discomfort made me feel powerful. I looked at the door and wheeled adrenaline to carry me out of that building across the parking lot and into my minivan. I sat in the driver's seat for a while and realized that the revelation of my husband's betrayal did not leave me feeling the despair of a wife with a broken heart. I was feeling the rage of a writer with a broken plot. Hell hath no fury like a memorist whose husband just fucked up her... St um, let me slow down. I'm getting excited. I can feel her energy building. <laughs> Hell hath no fury like a memoirist whose husband just fucked up her story. I was furious with him and disgusted with myself. I let down my guard and trusted that the other characters in my story would act as they should and that my plot would unfold as I mapped it. Ooh, we have I felt like that this year. Oh, my love. <laughs> I'd rendered my own future and my children vulnerable by ceding creative control to another character what an idiot never again i would take back full control starting now this was my story and my family and i would decide how it ended i take that shit i've been handed and i spin it into gold she a shit changer she changed shit i took control back with words sentences chapters and scripts i started with the story's resolution in my mind, a healed whole family, and work backward from there. There would be rage, pain, therapy, self-discovery, forgiveness, reluctant trust, then eventually fresh intimacy and redemption. I do not know if I lived the next few years and then wrote about what happened or if I wrote the next few years and then made it all happen. It didn't matter. What mattered was that at the end of the blur of time, I had myself a dark love story a drama of betrayal and forgiveness pain and redemption brokenness and healing in book form and family form checkmate life in Ann patches truth and beauty a reader approaches lucy at her book signing table and acts of her memoir how do you remember all of that i don't remember it she says i write it when love warrior was complete i handed the manuscript to craig and said here here's what it all meant i made it all mean something we won the war our family made it we are a love story after all you are welcome now the war was ended and i want to go home but home is still a foxhole with me and craig left staring at each other wondering what now what did we win I call my sister and ask if I can cancel the book launch event in Chicago. I want her to tell me that this will be fine. No big deal. She says we can cancel, but it will be a big deal. 
you committed to this. So I do this thing I do. From the outside, I imagine it looks like a straightening, a stiffening. From the inside, it feels like turning my liquid self to a solid. Water to ice. Glennon has left the building. I've got this. I board the plane to go tell a story I'm not sure I believe. I will be okay. I'll just tell it like a story instead of a life. As if I am past the end instead of stuck in the middle. I'll tell the truth, but I'll tell it with a slant. I'll blame myself just enough. Present him in the most sympathetic light. Attach my bulimia to my frigidity and my, frigid my frigidity to his infidelity. I'll tell how the cheating led to my self-reflection, how the self-reflection self led to forgiveness and the pain led to redemption. I'll tell it so that people will decide, of course, it was leading to this ending all along. I see it all had to happen exactly that way. That is what I will decide. That is what I will decide too. The moral arc of our life bends toward meaning especially if we bend it the moral arc of our life bends towards meaning especially if we bend it the way that way with all our damn mind <laughs> okay deep breath because i'm just okay we picked up my deep breath let's breathe sound is e as we elevate our essence okay we allow our essence to elevate our energy We'll connect our mind, our soul, our body. Let's breathe. I am more than enough. I listen to me. I heal me. I am my peace. The moral arc of our life bends toward meaning, especially if we bend that way with all our damn might. I arrive in Chicago and meet my book publicist at the Palmer House Hotel, where the event is being held. This weekend is the liter is the liter literary Super Bowl, and she's buzzing. We are on our way to to a dinner where ten authors will get to know one another before we head into the ballroom and pitch our upcoming books from the stage. This dinner, which I have just learned about a few hours before, has heightened my introvert terror alert level from yellow to red the room where the authors are to have dinner is small with two long conference tables pushed together to form a square instead of sitting people are milling milling with people i do not know is my idea of hell on earth i do not mill i walk over to drink to the drink table and pour an ice water a famous writer walks over and introduces herself. She asks, are you Glenelyn? I've been wanting to talk to you. You're the Christian one, right? Yes, I'm the one. My new book is about a woman who has a religious experience and becomes a Christian. Do you believe it? A Christian. It feels so real to her. I don't know how my readers will react. Will people be able to take her seriously? What do you think? Do you feel like people take you seriously? I say the most serious thing I can think of and then excuse myself. I look at the table, no assigned seats, damn it. George Saunders sits quietly at the end of his of the table. He seems gentle and kind and I like to sit next to him, but he is a man and I don't know how to talk to men. At the end of the table is a young woman with calm energy. I sit down next to her. She is 20 something releasing her first children's book. I ask her, Question after question while considering how wonderful it would be if the organizers would just place our books on the table so we could get to know each other by reading silently. We butter our rolls, salads are served. As I'm reaching for a dressing, the children's book lady looks over at the door. I look over too. Suddenly, a woman is standing where nothingness used to be. She takes up an entire doorway, the entire room, the entire universe. <laughs> she has short hair, platinum on top, shaved on the sides. She is wearing a long trench coat, a red scarf, a warm half smile, cool, still confidence. She stands still there for a moment, taking inventory of the room. I stare at her and take inventory of my entire life. My whole being says, there she is. Then I lose control of my body. I stand up and 
open my arms wide. She looks over, cocks her head to the side, raises her eyebrows, smiles at me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Why am I standing here? Why are my arms open? Oh my God, what am I doing? I sit back down. She walks around the table and shakes hands with everyone. When she gets to me, I stand up again, turn around, face her. I'm Abby, she says. I ask if I can hug her. I ask if I can hug her because what if this is my only chance? She smiles and opens her, opens her arms. Then the smell that will become home to me, skin like powder and fabric softener blended with the wool of her coat and her cologne and something that smelled like air, like outdoors, like crisp sky, like a baby and a woman and a man and the whole world. <laughs> the only seat left is at the far end of the table, so she walks away from me and sits down. She'll later tell me that she didn't eat or speak because of all of her energy was spent trying not to stare. Mine too. Dinner ends and there's more milling. Oh my God, more milling. And now with the revolution in the room, I excuse myself to go to the bathroom and kill two milling minutes. When I walk out, she is standing in the hallway watching the bathroom door, waiting. She motions to me to come over. I look behind me to make sure it's me she's talking to. She laughs. She laughs. Then it's time to walk to the ballroom. We separate ourselves from the pack somehow. There are people three feet in front of us and behind us. But here we are, walking along together. I want to... I want so badly to be interesting, but she is so cool and I don't know how to be cool. I've not been cool a day in my life. I am warm, burning up, sweating through my shirt already. She starts talking, thank God. She tells me about the book she's about to release. She says, but things are hard right now. You probably heard. Heard what? I have not heard. What would I have heard? And where would I have heard it? She says, the news may be ESPN. Um, no, I have not heard the news on ESPN, I say. She speaks slowly at first, then all at once. I'm a soccer player, was a soccer player. I just retired and I'm not sure what I am now. I got a DUI last month. It was all over the news. I watched my mugshot scroll across the ticker for days. I can't believe I did it. I've been really lost and depressed the last couple of years and I just... I screwed up. I've always been about honor and I ruined my whole legacy. I let everybody down. I hurt the whole team, maybe. And now they want me to write my book in some, as some kind of hero athlete puff piece. But I keep thinking, what if I'm just honest? What if I write the truth about my life? I am sad for her, but I am thrilled for me. In our four minutes together, she has asked me about the three subjects I know best. Drinking, writing, and shame. This is my jam. I've got this. Hot damn. I put my hand on her arm. Electrical currents. I pull back and recover enough to say, listen, I have a rap sheet as long as your arm. I write it all. I be honest. I don't know much about the sports world, but I do know that out here in the real world, we like real people. She stops walking, so do I, too. She turns and looks directly at me. It appears that she's about to say something. I hold my breath. Then she turns and keeps walking. I start breathing and walking, too. We enter the ballroom. Look, my heart beating fast. We enter the ballroom and follow the other authors through a sea of round tables with white tablecloths, 30-foot ceilings, crystal chandeliers. We end up at the day's climb the stairs and see that we've been seated next to each other. We walk toward our places and when we arrive, she puts her hand on the back of my chair. She cannot decide whether to pull it out for me. She does. Thank you, I say. We sit down and the writer seated next to Abby asks where she's from. We live in Portland, Abby answers. The writer says, oh, I love Portland. Abby says, yeah. Something about the way she says, yeah, makes me listen very, very hard. 
I don't know how much longer I'll be there. We moved there because we thought it would be a good place to raise a family. I can tell just by the way she says this that there is no we left. I want to save her from her follow-up question. So I say, oh, people like us can't live in Portland. We're Portland on the inside. We need sunshine on the outside. I am immediately embarrassed by what I've just said. Portland on the inside? What the hell do those words even mean? People like us? Why did I say us? Us, how terribly presumptuous to just, to suggest the concept of us. Us, 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 us. She looks at me, her eyes widen, and she smiles. I changed my mind. I don't know what I meant, but I'm glad I said it. I decide that heaven is saying anything that makes this woman smile like that. I decide that heaven is saying anything that makes this woman smile like that. The event begins. When it is my turn to walk to the podium and speak, I disregard half of my planned speech and say things about shame and freedom that I want Abby to hear. I look at the hundreds of people in front of me and think only of her behind me. When I finish, I sit down and Abby looks at me. Her eyes are red. The dinner ends and people begin to approach our table. A line forms in front of Abby, 50 people deep. She turns and asks me to sign a copy of my book for her. I do. Then she turns back toward the crowd and starts smiling, signing, making small talk. She is comfortable, confident, gracious. She's used to this. A curly haired woman who has walked into dinner behind Abby approaches our table. I can tell she's waiting to talk to me. I smile and motion her over. She leans into me as close as possible and whispers, I'm sorry, I've never done anything like this before. I just know, I know Abby really well, like a sister. I don't know what happened here in the last hour, but I've never seen her like this. I just, I really feel like she needs you in her life. Somehow, this is so weird, I'm sorry. This woman is flustered and she has tears in her eyes. She hands me her business card. I understand that my answer will be important to her. I say, okay, yes, yes, of course. My friend Dinah was my, from my publishing house is waiting so that we can walk out together. I look over at Abby, still 40 fans left to sign for. I am not sad to leave Abby. I'm excited to leave her so I can think about her. I'm excited to leave because I realize I have never in my life felt this alive. And now I just want to go out into the world and walk around feeling this alive. I just want to start being this new person I have just suddenly somehow become. I say bye, Abby. Oh my God, I've said her name, Abby. I wonder if, if it's okay or if I should have asked permission to use this word that sends shockwaves rippling through me. She turns towards me, smiles, waves. She looks expected. Her face is asking a question that one day I'll answer. Dinah and I walk out of the ballroom and into the grand hallway. She stops me and asks, how do you think it went? I say, it was amazing. Dinah agrees. I agree. You were on fire up there, different somehow. Oh, you meant the speech? I was talking about the whole night. I felt the oddest thing. I felt like Abby and I had some kind of connection. Dinah grabbed my arm and said, I cannot believe you just said that. I can't believe this. I swear to God, I felt it too. I felt something happening between you from all the way in the back of the ballroom. This is so wild. I stared at her and said, it was, it is. The whole night, the connection between us, it was just like, Dinah looked hard at me and then said, like you two would have been together in another life. <laughs> oh, my love. Untamed. It is time for us to untame ourselves. It is time for us to be unladylike, damn it. It is time for us to use the words that they said we could not, whoever the fuck they are, even if they is us. It is time for us to untie, uncut, it is time for us to unfold, reveal, heal thyself, which equals a healthy self. Look at the word, heal thyself. Put it together, healthy self. Let's get to a healthy self. Let's breathe before we leave. 
e I untie me. I unfold me. I unleash me. I reveal me. One more deep breath. E I free me. I heal me. I am a divine, brave majesty. Much love, magnetic peace.